Success means doing the best we can with what we have. Success is the doing, not the getting. In the trying, not the triumph. Success is a personal standard, reaching for the highest that is in us, becoming all that we can be. And this week's opening quote comes from Zig Ziglar. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Truly one of the most extraordinary situations we see in the modern world has to be the outlawing and criminalization of cannabis. And it's an interesting tale how cannabis came to be demonized and made an illegal substance. And really there's no reason for it to remain that way. There really isn't because this is an incredibly useful plant and it's about time we called this out for what it is, ladies and gentlemen, because the uses of this plant and the benefit it has for not only mankind and society, but for the world in general, for the environment and every single aspect of our lives truly is remarkable. And the fact that there are so many uses for this plant and the fact that it has affected the human condition in such a negative way since it became demonized and made illegal would indicate that the outlawing of this plant is in fact one of the most terrible crimes that has ever been committed against the human race. It really is, folks. The banning of cannabis is a crime against humanity and any politician who supports the continued prohibition of this plant is actively engaging in crimes against humanity. And that is the bottom line. That really is the bottom line, folks. There is no grey area here. The fact is that cannabis needs to have all restrictions lifted from it immediately. And if the politicians refuse to do so, then the people need to prosecute the politicians under human rights abuses and crimes against humanity. I want to discuss a few of the uses of this plant today and how it actually became illegal. Probably not for the entire show, but I certainly want to touch on it here at the beginning of the broadcast because I think it is an interesting story when one does realise the myriad of uses that this plant actually has and the story of it being made illegal is quite an interesting one in itself. So, so I would like to spend a little bit of time on that at the start of the show here. And bear in mind, folks, that this plant is made illegal under drug laws and yet this plant has been responsible for exactly zero deaths in its entire history of recorded use, which dates back at least five to 10,000 years. And to say this plant is healing is really a massive understatement, folks. I've healed all sorts of things with this plant. I've personally treated people with various cancers and seen them all come through with flying colours. I've treated myself for skin cancer and I've seen it completely healed with one treatment of cannabis oil. I've treated lymphoma and Lyme's disease and autism with amazing results. I've seen Lyme's disease and lymphoma completely cured and I've seen amazing improvements in autistic children from giving them cannabis oil. The medicinal properties of this plant are literally off the charts, folks. For example, even the seeds, if you eat the seeds they will dissolve any plaque in your arteries and thereby greatly improve your health in regards to heart disease and this sort of stuff. There are very, very few substances that will dissolve artery plaque, folks, and yet the oil in cannabis seeds will do so. Cannabis or hemp was actually used as the basis for most medicines back before the turn of the last century. And when cannabis was taken out of our medicines and things became more chemically based and pharmaceutically based, then we saw a huge decline in the overall health of this planet. And we saw the emergence of all sorts of exotic diseases as well, such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all sorts of things began to appear that never existed when cannabis was used as the basis for all medicines. And bear in mind also, ladies and gentlemen, that we in fact have an endocannabinoid system in our body. Every organ in our body has receptors that are made to receive cannabinoids into our system. 
Notably, we do not have a receptor system for any other type of plant in our body. We don't have an endocarotene system in our body. We don't have an endo lettuce system or a tomato system or potatoes or any fruit or anything like that. But we do have an endo system in our body which is designed specifically to accept cannabinoids. And this would indicate that we have had a very, very long symbiotic relationship with this plant and that it is in fact our companion plant. And that's something that people seriously need to think about, folks. The fact that you have an endocannabinoid system in your body. And you need to ask yourself, why on earth such a system would be there if you were not supposed to be using this plant? Now, medicinally, just in everyday use, as I've just mentioned, the seeds, consuming the seeds, will quite literally dissolve artery plaque and greatly improve your health in that manner. Also, just eating in salads, the seeds and the leaves will do wonders just to maintain your balance of health. As I also mentioned, I've used the oil to treat skin cancers and various types of cancers with amazing results. The oil can also be applied directly to burns, and it will ease the pain of the burn almost instantly, and it will allow the skin to grow back with virtually no scarring because the oil has the effect of actually regenerating cells. It actually causes new cell growth and promotes cellular regeneration, which is absolutely amazing that it can do that. And that is the high THC content cannabis oil I'm talking about there, folks. I'm not talking about the type of hemp oil you can go and buy from the health food store. I'm talking about highest THC CBD oil made from high-potency indica strains of cannabis, essentially the type of oil that Rick Simpson is famous for. This is the type of oil that is the most healing of all the oils. People think that THC is just a psychoactive substance, but it's actually very healing as well. In fact, it is THC which has been found to be the most effective cannabinoid in treating cancers. Another amazing aspect of this plant, getting away from the medical side of things for a second, is it has the ability to mineralize. And what I mean by mineralize is that there are certain parts of the plant which have the ability to petrify And what happens, folks, is you get the substance out of the center of the stalk of the plant, which is called the herd. It's a powdery white substance that's found in the center of the stem. And you mix this with lime and then mix it with water. And in so doing, the lime and the herd bond together and they quite literally petrify and the plant matter becomes a mineral because it becomes like stone. And it forms a substance which is twice as strong as concrete and six times lighter than concrete. And you'll actually find remnants of this substance in parts of ancient Cairo where they used to build buildings out of this. So that's another amazing part about it, folks. It actually has the ability to petrify with the simple addition of lime and water and form a much more environmentally friendly and much more usable form of concrete and much superior form of concrete to anything we are using today. And of course, folks, this can all be obtained from an annual crop that grows in three months and does so with no chemicals and actually improves the soil that it grows in. So we could say goodbye to all of those quarries that are digging for concrete and gravel and all the stuff that we use in building when we could just use lime and hemp herd and find that we have far superior buildings than the ones we are currently constructing. And continuing on with construction for a moment, we can also make far, far superior quality particle board that can be used in floorings and all sorts of stuff in buildings than anything we're making now from using crushed hemp fibre. We could also make superior quality plastics by using the cellulose found within the hemp plant as well. Henry Ford actually made a car back in, I think it was the 1930s or 1940s, made completely from cellulose that he extracted from hemp, sisal and flax, I believe, though I may be wrong with the last one, it may have been wheat, and he built a car out of this cellulose so you couldn't put a dent in with a nine-pound sledgehammer. So here we have concrete, particle board and plastics simply from this plant straight up, not to mention superior quality paper that will outlast any other paper. Most paper money was actually made from hemp because it was the only sort of fibre that was robust enough to withstand constant handling that money gets. And when you consider we are pulping endless amounts of old growth forests to make newspaper every day, which we usually burn at the end of the week, it makes perfect sense to be, rather than using trees that take hundreds of years to grow, to actually be getting this material from a three-month annual crop 
which itself produces a far superior quality fibre. We also find that we can make far superior quality clothing. We can make quite soft materials which are far more long wearing than the toughest denim. So we could say goodbye to these pollutive industries such as the cotton industry, which takes a massive amount of chemicals to grow cotton. We could say goodbye to the logging of old growth forests. We could say goodbye to using petrochemicals to create plastics. We could say goodbye to mining for concrete and mining for gravel to use in building. We could say goodbye to chopping down forests to use in building as well. So you see, by simply decriminalising hemp and opening it up for use, we could effectively remove the world of some of the most pollutive industries that we are now suffering to rampage across this earth. Some of these industries are destroying our environment to a massive degree, and we could replace them all with an annual crop that grows in three months, gives you everything you need for all of these industries, and grows without chemicals and actually improves the soil that it grows in. So someone please explain to me why we are not doing this. Oh, that's right, it's because they don't want people smoking pot. Well, that's the excuse that they give anyway, but people getting stoned from smoking marijuana is simply the smokescreen to cover up the myriad of uses that this plant has. Because unfortunately, some of these industries that I've just mentioned, which are indeed some of the most pollutive industries on the planet, happen to also be some of the most profitable. And it's extremely important for people to understand that. It really is that there is absolutely no medical reason for cannabis to be outlawed. In fact, in all studies done, it is shown to have absolutely no detrimental effects on anybody in any manner whatsoever. They even did studies to see whether it would cause long-term effects in regard to study or mental function or anything like that, and they found that it made absolutely no difference at all. As far as health tests, well, there was one series of tests that they did on rodents, and they found that rodents that were given high THC strains of cannabis lived longer and had fewer cancers. In fact, the government conducted 10 tests on cannabis to study its detrimental effects, and every one of the tests proved their claim to be wrong. There were 10 tests they really wished they'd never run. There was one test where they were seeing whether it affected mortality. They found that it didn't have any effect on mortality at all. In other words, nobody can die from this and it doesn't reduce your lifespan either. They did tests to see whether heavy smoking during youth would cause adverse effects later in life and they found that it didn't. There's also the claim that cannabis is a gateway drug to other drugs and they found this to be also mistaken. In fact, most cannabis users don't ever want to use other drugs. They simply stay smoking cannabis for most of their lives. There's also the fact that prohibition of cannabis does not work. All it does is drive the price up and thereby provide income for crime gangs to buy weapons and deal other drugs or whatever it is they want to do. They did a great many studies and found that it did have incredible effects in dealing with cancer, but of course they didn't tell anyone and they also found that it had numerous other medical benefits, but of course, again, they did not tell anyone. And as I said, folks, because cannabis has been responsible for exactly zero deaths in its entire history of recorded use, and I said five or 10,000 years, but it is actually from memory, I think about 12,000 years, and there's actually a rope that was found, which is reported to be 26,000 years old, which was made from hemp as well. So in all of this time, there has never been anyone suffer any detrimental effects from using this plant, and the benefits that this plant holds for mankind are absolutely astronomical, so there should be no doubt in anybody's mind that getting high from this plant is simply the smokescreen that is used to vilify it in the eyes of the public, because were this plant decriminalized, it would put many of the most pollutive and most profitable industries out of business straight away. Now, of course, there's not a lot of money that goes into the pockets of the politicians if that happens, is there? Of course, the other problem is, again, that people use the plant to get high, and when people get high, they tend to view the world a little differently. In days long past, where smoking of cannabis was first popularised, which was India, it was said to bring moments of great spiritual enlightenment. What we hear from our governments is that people who smoke cannabis end up 
becoming maladjusted to society, and that is the problem they have with it. And really what happens, folks, is that when people smoke cannabis, they actually wake up to reality and they look around them and they go, oh, my God, what am I swimming in? And they simply don't want to participate in this sham anymore. And that, of course, is a huge problem for the government. It's a huge problem for the economic slavery system that our government is running. And I would suggest that what happens when people smoke cannabis, folks, is that they snap out of their trance and they become sane. And that is why they become maladjusted to this society. But as once said by Judy Krishnamurti, it is no measure of health to be well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society. People smoke cannabis and they wake up and see that's what we're living in, and this becomes very detrimental for the powers that believe they be. And that, I believe, is another reason why the plant was vilified and outlawed so profoundly. But it is a very interesting story how the plant became outlawed. It was actually back in 1937 when they first began passing legislation dealing with this plant. And the crusade for the prohibition of cannabis was led by a man named Harry Anslinger.